Hey everyone, Micah here. And today I'm sitting with Daryl Chambers and uh, we're gonna talk about um, the wonderful history of Plaza Bible Church sending people out. And so we're gonna have a conversation and, and uh, really look here at, at uh, the heart of our church and the legacy of our church of being one that um, disciples, that mentors, and that sends. Hi, Daryl. How you doing? Hi, Pastor Micah. <laughs> Thanks for joining me out here. Yeah. The last time I was on a video at uh, Plaza Bible Church, I was a, a news commentator. So Nice. <laughs> uh, that was a lot easier because I had a script to read from. This sure. time <laughs> it's a little more difficult. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, I mean, tell me a little bit about, you know, you and Sharon and your, your season at Plaza and and just the the heart to not just gather people, mm -hmm. but to say, hey, you need to go and do what God's calling you to do, and how can we be a part of that? Well, when Sharon and I started coming, it was probably in the early 70s, maybe a little before that, and our family was young. We had two, two children, and we all grew up there at the church, as a lot of families did. We kind of grew together yeah. at Plaza Bible Church, and that was one of the things that made it very special, sure. because as our pastor grew up, because he was in the same situation we grew with him and yeah. he was a, he was a great pastor Ron Williams and uh, he left quite a legacy for others to follow yeah. and so uh, we we learned one of the things we learned through him was to give people away mm -hmm. and we were always it seemed to us giving those that God had raised up in the church and seemed to be so vital to our church that the it best seemed ones. <laughs> yeah it seemed like well we're not sure we want to do this we want to keep these folks yeah. but what we learned through that i think what we learned was you give it away and god replenishes he fills you back up and he provides other leaders and the church continue to grow and prosper and so uh that's that's one of the things we learned and um that uh, was instilled at plaza at a very young early age in the church and it's always been a missions oriented church mm -hmm. and uh, not only for sending out people in the church but for supporting missionaries around the world as a matter of fact one of the people on this list John Yananolavu and his wife Ajaya were missionaries in India mm -hmm. and Ron met them and you know it's a long story but eventually they ended up being a part of our church and part of our ministry so there's a lot of names on this list. Yeah. A lot of them could use your prayers mm. because, excuse me for getting a little emotional, but these people are all very near and dear to Plaza Bible Church. And some of them have had some rough times. There's been a lot of successes, but there's been a lot of challenges. Yeah. Some of them have passed away and they're no longer with us. Uh, that's how far this goes back. So, Daryl, would you mind telling me um, what happens if the church stops sending? Like if we just kind of keep people to ourselves? Well, it'll die. Mm. Pretty, um, it, it, or it'll, it, it may not, you may not stop having church. Sure. But certainly it's, I'm sure you've heard the illustration of uh, how the um, the Jordan River is full of life because it keeps flowing. It has a, a beginning and an opening. It flows from one spot to another and empties into the Dead Sea. Sure. And everything in the Dead Sea dies because there's no outlet. Mm. And so everything, the minerals and everything become accumulated and there's no, not anything living in there. So that's kind of what would happen to the church. If you're not giving, you're going to die in terms of being fruitful and yeah. led by the Spirit. Is there anyone on this list in your mind who, because uh, you mentioned earlier that the church was, sometimes you guys would be hesitant to send somebody out, like, oh, I don't know if we could let this person go, but then you did. Is there someone in your mind who you say, I'm, I'm so glad that we sent them yeah. and that we released them and that, we, and that they went? Yeah. Some of the first ones were the hardest to let go. Mm -hmm. Alan Irma White, uh, White and Michael and Shirley Roberts uh, were difficult to let go. Um, uh, Jim Scott and Melinda were difficult to let go. Uh, they were such a vital part of our church. And yeah. uh, 
they held such a special place of leadership. Others we understood were being raised under them mm -hmm. and by Ron Williams and the other pastors and were being mentored to go out. Yeah. But there were others that like them that uh, we kind of would have liked to have held on to if we mm -hmm. were selfish and not doing what God wanted us to do. Yeah. Uh, there were some others, but uh, those two in particular, those those people, in particular, Ron and Anita Williams, for sure, mm -hmm. when they left, that was that was so hard. Mm -hmm. That was uh, almost traumatic mm -hmm. to let them go, but that's what God wanted, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Daryl, will you tell me about um, just the legacy of Foursquare as a denomination and its strength in sending? Sure. As uh, as a young boy, I remember growing up in the La Habra Foursquare Church, mm -hmm. and there was always an emphasis on mission, world missions mm -hmm. and reaching the lost. And uh, we would have missionaries come and, and share their story. And uh, we had a little missions bank. They were shaped like a world. And uh, we were, we would, as children, put money in there to invest in uh, world missions. So it was always part of what Foursquare was about. And uh, some of the names, I, I should remember them, but uh, Papua New Guinea is one that I uh, heard a lot about when I was a kid. And I can't remember the missionary's name, but it was pretty uh, impressive to yeah. hear him speak and his wife. You mentioned that the church used to host missionaries coming through. And, Absolutely. And allowing them to speak yeah. and share. And yep. They were, uh, they were held in high regard. Kind of moves us out of our comfort zone when we hear of the hardships and, and also the joy, but really the, the struggle that our missionaries go through. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Some of the best books I've ever read are about missionaries and uh, what they have accomplished, how God works through them. But I still believe that every person, from the person who sweeps the floors to the person who stands in the pulpit, has tremendous impact on the kingdom of God. So we don't, we, we don't want to minimize the folks that serve in other areas because yeah. certainly Paul didn't do that yeah. when he talked about the body of Christ. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we have been, that I've been, in the direction I've been encouraging us in is, uh, you know, being a church that sets out to finish the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And that takes every Christian saying, how am I going to apply myself Exactly. And leverage my life to yeah. see this happen. Yeah. Looks different for everyone, but like you're saying, if I'm if I'm sweeping floors, man, I, those floors are going to be the cleanest floors <laughs> <laughs> anyone's ever seen. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's definitely strength when the whole church acts like the body of Christ. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. All right, Dara, would you mind praying for sure. our church privilege. and uh, being able to be the kind of church that that not only helps people to know Jesus. And follow him but also be able to send people mm -hmm. thanks father we thank you that we could uh, spend some time together thank you for pastor micah for his heart to serve you and to serve people and to make a difference in the world to fulfill uh through plaza bible church uh, the great commission to take the gospel around the world thank you for the uh, legacy that you've given plaza over the years we pray you'll revive that and bring it bring it back strong, Lord. Uh, you you work uh, in so many mysterious ways and things that don't seem to make sense to our little minds, but you have purpose in everything. And so right now where Plaza is, you have purpose for them, and they're making a difference where they are. Uh, that's all they can do is be faithful to serve you and to bring glory to you where they are, whether it's a church of a thousand or a church of 25 makes no difference to you because you are God and you're the one that does the work. Help them to remain faithful and revive the vision and the passion to a greater degree than it exists now. 
to reach those that don't know you. Thank you, Lord, for the time that I was able to be at Plaza Bible Church and to grow as a person and as a man in Christ and the way that you blessed our family. We're so thankful for that. And uh, we just give you honor and glory today. In Jesus' name, amen.